Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Super Mario clone in Unity 5. So this series is aimed at absolute beginners of Unity. So if you've never used Unity before, um, you've just downloaded it for example, and you want to know how to make a game, like a platform game, Super Mario clone, then this is going to be perfect for you. If you have used Unity before, maybe you've seen a couple of my other tutorials uh, in a different series, uh, but still feel like you're a beginner, then again this tutorial is probably going to be just right for you. Uh, even if you're an experienced Unity user, um, you can still follow the series and learn a few different things, uh, see if we do things the way you would do. Um, so ultimately, um, what I really want to do in this series is just create a nice simple uh, Super Mario clone sort of game. Uh, but we won't be using any modeling platforms like Blender or 3D Studio Max. There are tons of uh, other tutorials by different users out there, so it's probably best to follow one of them if you want to do a bit of modeling beforehand. Uh, all our work will be done in Unity. So each episode will be probably about 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes long, I would say, uh, with each successive video following on from the last. Um, so as I say, we're going to create um, at least a couple of levels, which then you can probably incorporate and build your own. Uh, as we go through the series, we'll be adding various textures, assets, scripts, all of which will be available for free on the website. Uh, so in this first tutorial, we're going to get used to all this, which is the interface. And if I go to here, hopefully when you start Unity for the first time, uh, you'll be presented with this particular window, which is asking you to create a new project. Uh, simple, name your project. So for example, let's call this Super Mario Clone. Select where you want it to be saved to, nice and simple. Ensure you have 3D selected just here. And as for the assets and packages, don't worry about any of them. None of them apply to us at this very moment. If you don't have any of them asset packages, don't worry too much because in a future tutorial we'll be going through that anyway. Uh, once that's done, click on Create Project. And I've gone ahead and already done that to save a couple of minutes. Um, usually setting up a new project is pretty quick, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. So this is Unity 5.3. Uh, it came out in December 2015. If you're using any other version of Unity 5, then this series will still apply to you. If, for example, you're still using Unity 5.1, the interface will look virtually the same, all the options will still be in the same place, and you'll be able to copy everything we do to the letter. If you're using an earlier version, uh, Unity 4, Unity 3, I would recommend upgrading, uh, just because it's Unity 5 is much more stable, I would say, in some respects, and also things are moved in previous versions, so they may not be in the same place for this series. If you're in the future and you have Unity 6, then uh, I can only assume that this tutorial will still apply to you. So, once we've got our new project, we have this Unity window. Over here is the hierarchy. Now, the hierarchy is where you store all your game objects in text form in this case. So, for example, by default, there are two objects in the scene when you start a new project, main camera and directional light. When you click on the hierarchy, an item, it is selected in this main scene window. Now, this main scene window is where you theoretically build your entire game. You can physically see what is being done and what is around. Um, so every time we put in a new object, we do different things, it, it will appear here. This one next to it is the game window. This is where you can actually play, beta test or alpha test, whatever you want to call it, your game as you build it. So for example, in a couple of tutorials, we'll have built up a small section. We'll have our player in there and we'll be on this to see how it goes through. Most of the time will be spent on our scene view. Over here is the inspector pane. The inspector pane is used to kind of fine tune all your objects within the hierarchy. So in this case, we're currently selected on the directional light, and you can see there are a few different objects here that we can change. We don't need to worry too much about most of the object uh, their settings, because luckily with Unity, it um, by default, it's pretty much accurate of what we could do with, especially for a beginner. Uh, down here, we have the project window. 
and the project and asset window is where you import all your textures, your scripts, your models, whichever. They all come in down here. And it, it's nice to keep it neat and tidy because then you can easily find things. But it does come with a search window if you lose anything. And next to it is the console. As you can see, two errors have appeared. Don't need to worry about them. Usually if you get errors, it doesn't cause your game to crash. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. Usually we'll only use this console if we have an error in our script, which hopefully we won't get any errors in our scripts. So after all that, what we're going to do is we're going to start building our game nice and quickly. Up here, you have game object. Now this game object menu uh, allows you to create many different objects within the game, whether it be light, uh, an audio device, source, whether it's a 3D object or just an empty object within the game. Usually we will always come here to insert. So down here we have 3D object and we're going to insert a cube. And now you can see the cube is right in the middle of our scene at position 0, 0, 0. The rotation is also 0, 0, 0. The scale is 1 by 1 by 1. So the x axis is the red arrow, which is this way. The y is the green, which is this way. And the z or z is this way. So generally when you start up any um, project and when you start inserting your objects, what I usually like to do is bring it to a zero, zero, zero position before I start anything else, because then at least it brings it to a nice comfortable position in your scene that we can um, see and then modify as we need to. So in this case, I'm going to start by renaming this cube because it's a cube, but we don't want it to be called a cube. So right click, rename, and let's call this, uh, let's call it ground. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to now experiment a little with the mouse. So the middle mouse wheel allows you to zoom in and out. Holding down the right mouse button and moving your mouse allows you to pivot on the spot to look around your scene. Up here we have a little hand tool. Selecting the hand tool enables you to move around like so. You can also press the arrow keys or the W, A, S and D keys to do different things too. So in this case if you press W it will select that particular object. Well the arrow keys are the ones which enable you to move around. Uh, sorry the W, A, S, D keys that therefore when you play the game itself but we'll get into that later on. Um, if you select an object in your hierarchy and press the F key it will light it up and focus. If you double click an object in hierarchy it will bring it to the center of your attention. So up here as I say this hand tool enables you to move around but it does not enable you to select an object. However you can still use the pivot point by using your right mouse button moving around. So this particular cube I'm going to keep as size 1 by 1 by 1. I don't really want to increase it that much. What we are going to do though is we're going to duplicate this particular cube because we're going to use this now as our ground for our player to scroll across. So if you select, make sure you have your ground selected, hold the control button on your keyboard and press D. That will duplicate and you'll have this down here. Nothing has changed here because the two objects are actually intersected and together. So they just like look like one object. So next, if you go to edit, and all the way down the bottom you should have snap settings. And it opens up a little window like this. And whatever yours is set to on this move X, move Y, move Z, change it to one by one by one. And all that does is when you hold control and then move an arrow like so, it snaps it by one at a time. If you were to set it to 0 0.5 it would snap it to half at a time and the same applies if uh, you have higher, lower, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So we've duplicated that ground cube, we've held control and we've pulled it out this way to make what looks like an oblong, whereas in actual fact it's two cubes together. So the next thing we need to have a look at our main camera. You'll see here we have a main camera view 
of our scene as such. If we go to game, we should also be able to see the same thing. Our camera displays what we see in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand tool. I'm going to pull myself up here, right button, pivot round, and then use the arrow key to scroll this way. And then I'm going to pivot round once again. So we look here, this will be the front of our game. So we'll have our level going this way and our character here. So what ultimately what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this cube that we duplicated I'm going to hold control and pull it backwards on the blue, which is the Z axis, and then across. So it is then behind our first cube. If you go to main camera, you can see it only looks like one cube. But we will change that when we deal more with the camera in a later tutorial. So now I'm going to take our original cube, hold control, press D, and then hold control again and pull the arrow down. So now we have kind of an upside down L shape. Uh, that really is the basics to Unity, and it is the basics of what we're going to be doing in our second tutorial. So although it looks like we have just created three objects in an upside down L shape, this is the basis of what we will have as our level. So in the next episode, we're going to be looking at some texturing, some materials. We'll also look at parenting objects in the hierarchy, and we'll also look at a bit of depth perception. Now depth perception is quite important in a side-scrolling game as it gives the impression of a distance between the background, i.e. the sky and the clouds, and the foreground, which is where your character uh, runs along. So by the end of the next tutorial, it will actually already start to be looking a bit like a Mario game. So you don't need to worry too much about how long it will be before we start making it look like Mario. Uh, so, yes, we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Um, as I say, it is a very ultimate beginner tutorial, but it also gives you an insight as to where we're going with this series. So head over to our website if you want some free assets, if you want to check out our other tutorials. Uh, head over to Facebook and Twitter if you want a bit of updates, if you want some little kind of sneak peeks, a uh, bit of interaction. Just head over there. There's people around. And uh, yeah, that's the end of this tutorial, um, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.